Who is he? I'm Batman. These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, diehard Batman fan, and viewer of the show Gotham, V Infuso. Now, previously I spoke about Gotham's portrayals of beloved Batman characters like the Joker, Harley Quinn, and the Penguin. Well, today we're going to talk about the show's grand finale. Or, at least their attempted one. Like the ending to Smallville, a similar show also named after the main character who will one day be an iconic superhero's hometown, that also serves as an origin story of sorts, but an alternative take on that origin story. Like that show, Gotham's goodbye was very... underwhelming. As a matter of fact, I think there are a lot of people out there who would even consider this one of the show's worst episodes overall. This was a disappointment to the fans of the show, and fans of The Dark Knight in general. So to say that this episode fell short of the epic that it clearly was trying to be, is probably a bit of an understatement. I can only guess that you guys read the title and came here because you want to hear me tear it apart. You want to hear how much I absolutely loathe this episode. But here's the thing. Strangely enough, I both like and dislike this episode. You can say we're of two minds on the subject. <laughs> there were elements to this finale that I think were downright fantastic. But there were also elements to this episode that I think were wrong in so many ways. Wrong for the series finale, wrong for the series, wrong for Batman. Just, just overall, WRONG! The show made the decision to jump a decade into the future. Now in general, I think when such a decision is made, it reeks of desperation to wrap things up. Like, the creators ran out of the time they were afforded to tell their story. Their proverbial teacher came in and was like, alright, pens and pencils down. It's like they were stopped mid-sentence and they had to speed through the story. And unfortunately, Bruce Wayne's parents were taken before his very young eyes. And then, uh, middle, 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 and Batman. I don't know, it's just weird that a series timeline would run at the speed of regular time, but then, like, one summer later, we're pressing the fast-forward button. It just doesn't sit well with me. Like, had you actually waited that time to get to the point? Fine, fair enough. I understand. But to just jump a decade in the time span of a television week? I don't know. It's a tough sell for me. I don't like it being done. The time jump also leads to a lot of annoying, excessive exposition dialogue, where I guess the writers thought we'd forget it took place ten years in the future, so they have to keep reminding us every chance they get. Bruce Wayne is returning home for the first time in a decade. I've had ten years, Harf. Ten years, not a word. I've been in here ten years! Ten years! Oh, it's been ten years. Ten years. Maybe. But he's been inside Arkham for ten years. He doesn't get to come back after ten years and act like nothing's happened. As you know, ten years ago. What do I know? I did just spend the last ten years in the funny time. Yeah, okay, we get it. Ten years now. I got it. Thank you. It's one thing to metaphorically lead me to the bathroom. It's another thing to symbolically enter that bathroom with me and hold my- <gasps> What the- You know, stop insisting. A passing mention here or there would have been fine. The bigger issue with this is that because of the time jump, the studio decided to recast some of the show's characters instead of just trying to make the performers look older. And the series finale suffers greatly from the absence of two of its leads in Bruce and Selina. For five years, audiences watched their characters evolve and they literally watch their actors grow up. So to time jump a decade into the future, and now need new actors to portray those characters in the show's last hurrah, it's just a strange idea. Because no matter how good these actors' performances were, they were never going to be the same performances that the show's fans had come to know and love. The actress for Catwoman here does a really good job with what she was given, but her actions and reactions seem night and day from the work put in by the original Selena actress. These two don't link up at all. They don't look the same, they don't act the same, they don't feel like the same person. And I get it, sure, a decade's passed. Of course she was going to be different. But this is something that feels less brought on by the passing of fictional time, and more due to the fact that this character was given a completely different actress for one episode. And the one episode is the last episode. And the last episode includes a whole lot of her. She's kind of she's important to what's going on. I mean, fair enough on Bruce, I guess. The show's last episode is centered around his alleged return to the city. He's kept off-screen as a mystery, so there's really not that much of a performance, but there is a presence. Throughout the show's last episode, several of the series' leads encounter him, but he's left in the shadow, not being seen, 
but still being felt. The build-up to the last shot is integral to this episode. As a matter of fact, I think it's the best thing about it. We as a viewing audience are too overexposed to Batman. Being that we see his story from his perspective a lot of the time, and the rest of the time we see narratives follow him in and out of the cowl. We know every little detail about Bruce Wayne slash Batman's life. We know how he feels about things, we know how he thinks. When we see Batman, we see a very human character. We see a character that we know. But here, we see Batman through the eyes of Gotham's own citizens. We see him as that dark figure that haunts over the city, frightening a superstitious and cowardly lot. This episode makes Batman less man and more myth. And I don't think this has been done better anywhere else. The episode really captures the intrigue, the mystery, and the fright that the Dark Knight's presence elicits. The brief glimpse we get of him at the end of the series is kind of telling of where Batman exists in society. That distance between him and who he protects is very evident. In my opinion, the show did this right. And I think ending with that three millisecond look at him and the cowl was probably a smart choice. Those working on the show knew that this story ended where the real one began. Hence titling this episode The Beginning. I don't know about you, but I prefer this over CGIing a suit onto somebody in the distance. Yeah, I haven't forgotten about that, Tom. Ten years later and I'm still out here casting Super Shade. Side note, I, I, I'm willing to forgive and forget if you actually do get the Smallville animated series made. We can let bygones be bygones. Tom, I swear to God, if you have it written in your contract that you don't want to be drawn into a Super Shade, I'm gonna lose my shit. Sorry, anyway, where, where was I? Oh, right. If there was anything to admire from this episode, it was how they went about showcasing the Caped Crusader in his very first outing. They used the less is more approach, and I think it really worked out for them here. But there are other choices in this episode that, quite frankly, completely confuse me. Like everything involving Jim Gordon. Gordon spends the entire show's finale looking to resign as commissioner. Like, why is that even a plot point? We all know that's not gonna happen. That man is gonna die in the chair. And don't even get me star- Don't even get me started with this guy's mustache. They finally gave Gordon his trademark lip brow. The one he's most known for in almost every iteration of the character. We're talking the 1989 film, its sequels, the animated series, not the 66 show, because that's, that's contradictory to my narrative here. The Dark Knight trilogy, the Justice League movies. They gave him his iconic look, but before we even get to the halfway point, he shaves it off. Well, yeah, it was time to admit it. I was trying something. It didn't work. Like, wh what's even the point? Who was this for? What were you trying to prove? If you weren't gonna commit and the dude from the OC didn't want to wear a fake mustache all episode, then just don't give the guy a mustache. I don't get it. Wh why give it to him if you're gonna take it away? And if we're going the stupid route, make Harvey put on 110 pounds and drop it 12 minutes into the 44 minute episode. If we're gonna go stupid, let's go all the way stupid. Let let's just do it. None of this uh, half-assed bullshit. But speaking of putting on weight, what's more puzzling than Gordon's now you see me, now you don't facial hair trick was turning Ozzy into Burgess Meredith. Yes, the show's version of the Penguin was a bit different from the ones that we'd seen in comics or even movies or games. But I think he did a lot to establish himself as this new alternative take on the character. Kinda like Danny DeVito did in the 1990s. It just seems unnecessary to dress the guy up like the Monopoly Man. You know, it doesn't fit this version of the character, and it, it doesn't suit the actor, and I think it really stands out in comparison to everything else this fictional world has had to offer. It looks a little bit too goofy for Gotham. I credit them for giving it a try and trying to line this up better with the source material, but it's kinda unnecessary. I think most people accepted that Gotham existed in its own unique universe. Things happen here that are a lot different from how they happen everywhere else. This just doesn't feel like the same Penguin. And I don't think this was the end we'd like to see for our non-feathered friend. The show's Riddler also seems to kind of dip more into Jim Carrey territory in the last episode. Between his wig and his maniac over-the-top actions, some of these scenes can start to feel a little bit less like a finale to Gotham, and a lot more like a prequel to Batman Forever. I don't hate his performance here, but I think it kind of conflicts with what he's been doing up until this point. This only lasts for like a scene or two in Arkham, but it's something I noticed and I just I can't bring myself to unsee. His acting later also feels a little bit hammy, which, by the way, I love his performance and what he's done in the series in general, but in the later episodes, it started to feel a little bit flip-floppy to me. Sometimes it was serious and deranged and sad, and other times it was maniacally hammy. I like the actor, and I like both sides of the character, I just kind of feel like they conflicted with themselves. 
Like, these were two different ways of going about being the Riddler, and you somehow chose both of them. It creates a performance that's at odds with itself. Then there's, of course, the highlight of the episode. Cameron Monaghan's official, non-official transformation into the Joker. Though legally, we can't say that. Yeah, this is really bizarre, because in a lot of ways, I feel that he's been more Joker-like before the show had Warner Brothers expressed permission to make him the Joker. As always, I think he did an excellent job, and I would be interested in seeing some type of return to role. He really only has one major scene, but man, does he make it count. I remember a big deal being made about this episode. This was huge. Because now, Warner Brothers had finally given Fox the permission to make Jeremiah the Joker. With the added stipulation that they still could not refer to him as the Joker. So... Kinda pointless, really. Oh, and not only could he not be referred to as the Joker, but he also couldn't have a full head of green hair, like the Joker. He couldn't wear the exact outfit that the Joker's known to wear. And he had to wear welding gloves for some reason, I don't know. This look, like this episode, is something I have mixed feelings about. I like the facial acid burn, I think it's a new interesting take on the Joker's face, and I surprisingly don't hate a nearly bald Clown Prince of Crime. Uh, of course it's not ideal, but it's, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. The outfit to me just kind of looks strange. And honestly, despite the fact that Warner Brothers allegedly gave the show their blessing, it to me feels like their talks really didn't do anything except reinstate the limitations the show has with this character. Which is dumb, because you know what? Everyone knows this character is the Joker. If you want to be technical and say, oh, well, he technically never called himself the Joker, everyone else did. Behind the scenes, he was referred to as the Joker. Those writing the show wrote him as the Joker. Cameron portraying the role played him as the Joker. The show gave him iconic Joker looks. They recreated Joker imagery. He was referred to as the Joker by fans of the show. And when you watch Gotham and you put subtitles on, guess what they refer to him as? The Joker. It doesn't matter whether the character introduced themselves a certain way, it doesn't change what this clearly is. Jerome was the Joker, Jeremiah was the Joker, these were variations of the Joker. I can show you a picture of Mr. Freeze and tell you that the character's name is Chili Fries, and it doesn't change the fact that that is clearly Mr. Freeze. Really being able to call him by the name was a formality anyway. I think the show did a really good job of establishing this character, even if they didn't establish his name. The performance was good, and there's elements that are great in developing this villain. Joker's callous killing of his most loyal subject is spot on. It highlights just how disposable people are to this guy, even those who are closest to him. His relationship with Echo echoes his future relationship with Harley Quinn. No pun intended. She would do anything for him, but it'd never be enough. She loved him, but not nearly as much as he loved himself. And also ending Echo's life with the line but I suppose there are other fish in the sea. Indicates that she wasn't the series version of Harley Quinn, but just instead her predecessor. We're talking about Victim Zero over here. I have a bunch of other issues with this episode as well. Joker's whole plan in this seems really contrived, and a lot of random things would have to perfectly fall in place for everything to align. You know, the plan just doesn't feel worth the effort Jeremiah put into it. Pretending to be comatose for a full decade to kidnap Gordon's kid and try to take down Wayne Tower? I don't know, guy. Not your best work. I don't know if it was worth remaining idle for 10 years. Just because it worked in The Dark Knight Returns doesn't mean it works here. Throughout the whole series, the Penguin was shown to be this master manipulator. He had the incredible gift of foresight. He was strategic, he could set up a plan. He was so smart that he could even accurately predict how others would react to things. So then why is it he set Jim Gordon up the same way he did in the first season? Didn't you do that already? It's a callback. Like, did he forget how it ended last time? And now he's gonna do the same exact thing? Why is he surprised that it had the same exact conclusion? He did absolutely nothing to change the outcome here. I don't know, I guess that just kind of bugged me. Doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. Oh, shit. Expecting shit to change. That is crazy. I definitely don't love the idea of everyone knowing Bruce is Batman before Bruce really got a chance to be Batman. You know, obviously Alfred and Lucius are aware. Fine, that makes sense, they need to. But as Selena knows, the Joker knows, 
Bullock Gordon they know, or at least it's implied that they're suspicious? Everybody knows! Like, what's the point of having a secret identity when it's not even really a secret? The show might as well have ended the same as Iron Man, Bruce Wayne walking up to a podium just to announce... I'm Batman. There you go, roll credits, that's all you need. It's also weird how people seem to know it's Bruce. You know, Selina is walking around the rooftops of Gotham, as you do, and she hears a noise, maybe she sees, like, a passing figure, and she's like, oh, shit. This is definitely the guy that I had a thing with when I was 15. Like, how would you know? What? Joker takes one look at him and immediately knows who he is. Like, it's not, it's not even worth wearing the mask anymore. It makes the whole costumed part of this feel less like it's it's to protect his loved ones by disguising his identity, and much more like a guy trying to make up for the time he didn't spend at Comic-Con. The finale also reminds me of Arkham Origins a bit, what with the story having a little bit too much come together all at once. I mean, here, Oswald's getting out of prison, Jeremiah's plan is coming to fruition, Nygma's breaking out of Arkham, Batman's breaking legs in Gotham, Bruce is returning, Gordon's retiring, it's a lot. These are a whole lot of big moments seemingly happening at the same time, so it kind of feels like a, a bit of an overload. Granted, this is more of a nitpick than it is anything else. But hey, this is the place for me to air even the tiniest of grievances I have. In the end, the Gotham finale isn't bad. It's not by any means unwatchable. I actually think that it's worth the watch. Regardless of where you stand, whether you're a fan of the show or whether you hate it, I think that this will provoke some kind of emotion out of you whether that be enjoyment or being enraged. I think if you watch this, you will definitely feel something. For me, I felt like shrugging my shoulders. Like I said, I don't think it's bad, but I do think it's bad for the series. As its own standalone thing, yeah, it's fine, I guess. There's definitely some positives. There's some interesting things that happen. The issue is, is that this isn't its own standalone thing. This isn't a one-off Batman project. This is the end of an entire series. It was the show's big send-off, and I think they may have missed the mark more than they hit it. Regardless, I still highly recommend seeing it for yourself to make your own opinions. And if you already have seen it, let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. What were your favorite and least favorite parts of the Gotham series finale? Did you love Gotham? Did you hate the ending? Or did you think it was the perfect goodbye? Actually, speaking of the perfect goodbye, with that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for stopping by. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one... Bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.